All right, I have a question for you guys. Would you rather have the money to go out and buy an expensive handbag or that really amazing watch you've been eyeing? Or would you rather spend a long weekend in Paris or Italy or Hawaii? Would you rather have the money to redecorate your home? Or would you rather take that money and take your friends and family on an amazing trip? Or create a dinner party in your home where you could bring all the people you've always wanted to talk to in one place to share stories and enjoy some good food. However you answer those questions, it's not right or wrong. It's just an opportunity, I think, to take a minute and think about how you might choose to spend some of your money when it comes to experiences. And I was doing some research for the podcast and I came across something really interesting. And I found that there's been a lot of research done on the way people spend money and how it relates to our happiness. And according to most of the research, people tend to be happier when they spend money on experiences rather than material things. Because experiences provide more, more lasting memory, satisfaction, as compared to some of the things that we might um, have as possessions. So I love this topic, and it's a conversation that perhaps so many of you can um, use to really get clear about how you might want to earmark some money when it comes to enjoyment. Now, please don't think that the message here is that you shouldn't have nice things because if you worked hard for it and you can have it, God bless you and you should do it. I'm all about it. Yet, if I could start the conversation today that has you thinking about also creating experiences with the money that you have, I think psychologically, there's so much to gain from creating experiences for yourself and for other people, because the ripple effect of that can really impact so many areas of your life. And so I'm not saying that it's better to spend money on experience or things, but I am encouraging you to consider what experiences you would like to spend money on throughout the year and what kind of lasting effect that could have for you. The other thing that I'm not saying is that spending money makes you happier. <laughs> I, I want to just put that out there too. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that how you choose to spend your money could create happiness, especially when it comes to experiences. I personally love to travel. It is something that my husband and I both enjoy and we plan for it throughout the year. Sometimes we travel alone. Sometimes we travel with other people. and it is something I look forward to, not just because it's downtime and it is a vacation, but for what the experience does for me. And I am definitely someone who is wired for experiences. I like to create them for other people too. I find a lot of joy in that. I like to see people have fun. I love to entertain and I like to create a certain atmosphere or feeling in my home. That's important to me. And I just really enjoy giving people something to connect to. So whether it's good food, good company, yes, a good bottle of wine, some pretty decor. I like to put flowers on the table and candles, whatever it is. I love to be able to have experiences because they become memories. And I, and I feel that when you create an experience... So whether it's for a day or a week or longer, there's always something to learn. There is always something that you discover, whether it be about the place you're visiting and the people and the culture, whether it's about what you learn about yourself too in the process. I've had a lot of time to think when I go away the way I travel and the way I experience uh, different destinations has definitely changed too over the years. I used to want to cram it all in and make sure that we saw everything. 
And I still love to explore and love to see where we're visiting and really make sure that I can get as much of that in uh, on the trip, but I'm also building in the downtime so that I can just breathe. So I can just really enjoy where I am. And um, so one of the experiences that we had recently, if you follow me on social, you might uh, remember that I shared a lot of pictures from my trip to South Africa. And uh, that was definitely an amazing trip. And what I would consider a bucket list trip for sure. Um, as a matter of fact, I wrote a bucket list mm, probably almost 10 years ago. And I've been working off the same list and I add things to it. And of course, love to check things off to say I've, I've, I've achieved it or experienced it. And that's another thing that I won't go into too much because I want to get back to the trip, but write a bucket list. Take the time now and start this list. And as I said, add to it because you want to get really clear about the experiences you want to have, the places you want to visit. And that to me is how we can live a full life. But if we don't take the time to put it down and think about it, we can't manifest it. So by starting that list right now, I don't care if you're 20 or you're 100 years old, make this bucket list of things you want to do, places you want to see, experiences you want to have. And in doing that, you're creating vision and you can then manifest how you want to get there. And I'm still amazed when I look at my list and how many things I've been able to check off because the intention is there. And it's in my sight. And so this trip to South Africa came probably a little earlier than I, I thought it might. My business partner and very good friend and I both had that on our bucket list. And we got talking about it one day. She had a big birthday coming up and we decided what better way to earmark and celebrate her birthday than this trip. So uh, we decided to do it. And so we went with um, our husband's. And we were there for two weeks and it was incredible. Uh, we did see a lot of things. We got to experience the wine country in South Africa, Fran Schoke, and and we were there for a couple of days. And my husband and I are definitely wine collectors and we uh, have a deep appreciation for good wine and winemaking. And so that was great. And then we moved over to Cape Town and went down around the Cape of Good Hope, which was really amazingly beautiful. But what struck me when we were there at the Cape of Good Hope was that I was standing looking out into the sea and realizing that thousands of years ago, this is exactly where explorers came by and discovered new parts of this world. And that really connected with me. And I thought that was incredible. And then we continued on, and the next part of our trip was safari. And I get it. Not everyone may have an opportunity to go to South Africa, but if you can, you should, for many reasons, not just because it's beauty, which it truly was a beautiful country, but also because of the people, I have to say. The people in South Africa were just incredibly kind and generous and welcoming and humble. And as I learned more and more about the history of the country and the people, it was just remarkable to see how they were able to rise above and come out of so many hardships and oppressions to be these positive, intelligent, forward-thinking, generous, not bitter, sweet, kind people that just, when they met you, they said, welcome home. And I just love that. So we'll come back to the people in a minute. Uh, but uh, our, our time on safari was really incredible too. And uh, I invite you to find me on social media if we're not already connected so you can find some pictures there. The experience of being... In, on safari was, and, and it is hard to explain because I learned so much through our guides about the animals 
about our planet. Another thing that I observed about the people of South Africa is their reverence for the planet and how they truly respect nature, respect the earth, respect the animals. They have a focus on sustainability, which I think we could all learn a lot from that. And I was able to really learn a lot about the animals and just the way that they live. And it was incredible because the guides, some of which who worked in these, these animal reserves for a long time, came to really learn and identify the animals. And this was not a, this was not a zoo, guys. This was, we were in the bush. This was the real thing. And just being able to learn about the characteristics of the different species, but also of the animal itself that they came to identify. First of all, we were able to see all bit, the big five. We were told that was something unusual, that most people who go on safari cannot be guaranteed that you'll see the big five out on safari. So that was really cool, I have to say. And in case you're not sure what the big five are, it's uh, lion, leopard, elephant, rhino, and buffalo, we're the buffalo. And so we were able to see all of it. And the leopard is one of the hardest ones to track or find. And we came across a leopard who had just got a kill and was eating, feeding in, in the tree, which uh, was pretty cool to experience. And our guide was able to tell us that leopard was about 16 years old because they are able to recognize the animal by the pattern of its spots on its face. And the lesson in that for me was how important it is to pay attention and to really look at details. And so our guide for that part of safari, her name was Queen, and she was really just so excited. She was just as excited to see something as we were, as if she was experiencing it for the first time too, which that to me was a lot of fun. And, you know, we came so close to these animals. We were just driving right alongside a, a lion walking down the road one morning. That was an out-of-body experience for me. So that is why figuring out what your experiences are, where you can go and visit. And listen, maybe it's the experience of sitting on a beach on the Atlantic Ocean and just paying attention to details like the seashells in the sand and the way the waves come crashing in or the different colors in the sky. It's just really about being so present that you notice everything. And I feel like on this trip to South Africa, I was able to dial it down enough where I could do that. And again, just being in nature, I, that alone does so much for us. And I felt closer to spirit. I felt closer to God in those moments. And I have to tell you the night sky, oh, incredible. Not only because we were on the other side of the world and in the Southern hemisphere versus the Northern hemisphere. So there were things in the sky. There were things you could see in the sky there that you just can't see here in, in where I live in New York. I saw the Milky Way with my naked eye, just incredible. And I haven't even gotten to some of the good stuff yet. The experiences, the memories, the lessons, the people, it's priceless. You cannot put a price tag on that. Now, one part of this trip that I really wanted to talk about today and share with you, because I think that this episode is really dedicated to experiences. That's really what we're talking about today. And we had so many great experiences, but one stands out in its own way. And that was really on the last day of the trip, we had traveled to Zimbabwe and our tour guide, his name is Rickus. He was really just great and always shared a lot of information with us. He is from South Africa. And the experience that we had on that last day started out pretty incredible. We went to Victoria Falls, which of course, when you can check off that you've seen one of the seven wonders of the world, you feel pretty, pretty grateful. And so that was already a wonderful experience, really powerful morning. And it got better when 
we were told that we were going to visit the local farmer's market. And our tour guide, he shared with us that normally he's given a little slush fund of money that he can buy the guests a trinket or maybe take us for a coffee and a dessert or something. And he thought that uh, it might be better for us to experience the farmer's market. And so he walked around and uh, we were on the bus. He walked around the bus and he gave everyone $5, five American dollars. And he explained that the farmer's market is a group of local people who grow their own vegetables and fruits and grains, and then of course, selling it to people in the town. Now, what you might not know is that Zimbabwe is probably one of the poorest countries on the planet. And we were told that the unemployment rate in Zimbabwe was like an astronomical 96%. Yet, I always felt safe. I never worried about anything being there. The people, as I said to you, are generous and kind and clearly take care of each other. So even though the unemployment rate is so high, they figure it out and they find ways to barter or make something, grow something and sell it. So you could say that the entrepreneurial spirit is alive in there. And so we come up on the farmer's market and of course, everyone in the farmer's market is excited to see a bus full of 30 people coming in to spend some money. And before we got off the bus, he explained to us that it's okay to barter, but at the same time, he was so honest about perspective, right? the perspective we should have. And he made sure that we could keep in perspective how hard the, the, the people there work to grow their crops or make whatever they're making to sell, and that it's not about taking advantage of them. It could be to barter and maybe get $5 worth of food for $4. And he also then asked us if that's what we do to please give them the $5 anyway. And so we were fine with that, of course. And before we got off the bus, he continued to explain more about this experience. And he encouraged us to ask questions and talk to the people, ask them how they cook certain things, what they use it for. And I thought that was pretty cool. And just about the same time, I was thinking, okay, so what are we doing with all this stuff? We're buying all these fruits and vegetables and grains and we leave tomorrow. Like he read my mind, our tour guide says, now, I know you're probably wondering what you're going to do with all this food. He said, we're going to load up at the bottom of the bus and we're going to put everything in the luggage area and we're going to drive up the road and I'm going to take you, and these were his words, to the old people's place and you're going to meet my friends that run it there are two women there that run it and you're going to be able to donate all your purchases to them and you're going to see just how you can really impact some lives there you couldn't even hear a pin drop on that bus because we're 30 people all from america by the way we're all from the u.s and we've been on this incredible journey for two weeks. We're traveling and we're on safari and we're just going to these incredible places. And we then had flown to Zimbabwe to experience Victoria Falls. And now we're going to be visiting this old folks home, as he called it, up the street in, in this town in Zimbabwe and donating fruits and vegetables and grains so that these women who run this whole place on volunteers and donations from, think about this, they're getting their donations unless there's a tour coming into town and this tour guide takes advantage of that again. They're getting donations from each other, from the other people in the town who are giving up some of the food for their family so that they can take care of the elderly. And so we get off the bus we had a, a really incredible experience, I have to say, in the farmer's market. My husband and I went over to a woman with her two little boys. This was a Saturday morning. And we're asking questions like we were encouraged to do. We got our $5 worth of food for $4. We had the pleasure of the two young boys really being great salespeople and saying, you should buy this and you should buy that and you have to buy this too. 
And so when we were done, I handed each one of them a dollar and told them that they did such a great job. And they were so excited. So that was a lot of fun. We wound up spending a lot more than $10 in there, especially when we knew what this was about, because we felt like we were blessing the people in the farmer's market. And we also then got to bless the people that were at the old folks home. And so just five bucks, that's another part of the story, what $5 can do. And again, this is just me sharing my experiences. This has no judgment. Uh, I'm not trying to say anything that will cause any kind of friction in terms of your value system, unless you you go there on your own. But I'm just saying in our country, right, we sometimes look at $5 and we don't think it's a lot of money and we lose sight of the value behind the $5. There is a friend of mine who has been doing it for a long time, actually, I'm going to give a shout out to Sue Armistead, who is this an, another incredible soul who w- gives the shirt off her back to help people. And she's been running this, I don't know what to call it. It's a movement. It's called the Goshen Generosity Challenge. Goshen is the town she lives in. And she just challenges people to donate $5. And she challenges people to ask her constantly why she might need your $5. And this is an opportunity that she has created to bless other people in the community who need it most. And when you think about $5 in itself, okay, it's the compound effect though, because if 10 people can give $5, if a hundred people can give $5, then you can see how it starts to accumulate. Again, just, you know, bless Sue and everyone who uh, supports her on that and, We can all take a a lesson from that, right? We could all just really think about giving, just giving, number one. And if it's a little bit, it's okay, because a little bit can go a long way, especially if you can encourage and inspire other people to do the same. And so back to this experience I had in South Africa, our tour guide I'm not going to say his name again, just because he told us he worried because this is not really sanctioned by his company. And this is something that he does on his own because he's so passionate about helping people. And so I just want to protect that and just acknowledge that too, that I had so much more respect for this person told him so, because that's the other thing when you feel and recognize something great in someone else, tell them. So I had the opportunity to to tell him just really how marvelous it is that he uses this platform that he has, right? He uses his business, his career path as a way to do so many good things. First of all, another lesson, I wrote about this in my journal from this trip, Watching him in action, you could see his joy. You could see the passion he had for his work. And it just was effortless for him. And so that I I had to take notice of that. And so that was a great lesson too, that we have to find the joy in everything that we do, because when we can, we will be more successful. And so he certainly loves what he does. And to then see that he takes it a step further and uses it as a way to make deep personal connections with not just the guests, but with the people of South Africa. He uses this as a vehicle to bless other people because he was very clear and very grateful for us being there because our dollars, right? The tourism is creating jobs, is creating economic stimulation, is creating opportunity for people there. And so he took it even further by bringing us to this farmer's market so we could spend money there and share more goodwill with them and even funded it, right? Even funded it. And so many of us added to that as well and spent more than the $10. But whatever it was, whether it was $5, $10, $20, a lot of us could agree that's not a ton of money. It's not a lot of money, but it was so powerful and changed lives that day. They probably made more money that day than they've made in a couple of weeks. And so that was a blessing and that felt great. And then we get on the bus, drive up the road, take all of our purchases, 
walk into this compound and it, I'm just going to ex- just describe what it was. It was poor. It was, there's humble housing there. I, that's all I'm going to say. And we were welcomed by the two women that run the old folks home as they call it. And uh, they were so excited to see us, so grateful. We start bringing in all of our purchases into this area they call the kitchen. And we are piling it on top of the table. And I know I wasn't the only one. So emotional and so choked up because we were just a vehicle for this blessing. And that is an incredible feeling. And they have all the food on the table and they're going through it and they're excited. And I hear them talking to each other and I, I could... In their native language, of course, I can't understand it, but I'm imagining as they're picking things up saying, oh, look what we got. Oh, this is going to be great. Oh, I can't wait to cook this for dinner or breakfast tomorrow. And then they were able to share with us some things about what they do daily to take care of the people there. They had about 16 people, I believe, in um, residence there who are fed twice a day and how they try to survive with the help of the people in the village and how it is an important part of their culture to take care of each other, and especially the elderly. And of course, that was so moving. They wanted to take us around. We got a tour. We met people. There was a woman there who was, I, I think, 111 years old, which that was incredible in itself. And I wished I could have sat down and talked to her to learn more about her life and her longevity. But she had such a beautiful smile and she put her hands together in the form of a prayer and nodded to all of us. And I just know that was her way of saying thank you. And so it was, it's even hard to explain to you as I share it now. And I pray that you're getting the essence of what we all felt that day. I know it's hard to express it and hard to experience it when you weren't there, but it was truly one of the highlights of the trip. Just taking the time to experience the farmer's market and talk to the people there, to go through, drive through the neighborhoods. It was, like I said, it was a Saturday morning and you realize you're in a really, you're in a different world there for sure. Yet I was watching people doing chores like you would normally do on a Saturday. And I thought, so we're different yet we're all the same, right? I watched this mom with her her two kids out in the yard, she's trying to hang the laundry and they're fighting. (laughs) It was a typical scene that you would find anywhere. And so it, it was just truly heartwarming and spirit filling to experience South Africa. I would love to go back and hope to go back. And again, for me, it's about the experiences and I'm just reminded by this quote when it comes to this Saturday that we had at the farmer's market and then visiting the the people at the old folks home. And the uh, quote is that helping one person might not change the whole world, but it could change the world for one person. And that's it, guys. You like that's the thing about experiences, because especially when you can share them with other people and Again, this trip was incredible. It was amazing on a lot of levels. We had amazing experiences, meals. I felt this great energy in South Africa too. As I said to you, the country itself is beautiful. I learned a lot about its history, its wildlife, its culture. But the most important thing that I feel like I took away was what I learned about its people. And as I said, the people there are really beautiful, caring people who do find joy in everything. And regardless of whatever their current or past circumstances are, they're just a wonderful example of positive thinking, optimism, kindness, humility, and love for every human being, no matter their color, no matter their ethnicity, no matter what country they're from. They're just a true example of resilience. And The highlight for me beyond the safari drives and feeding the elephants and walking around Victoria Falls and seeing the Cape of Good Hope was really that day, that Saturday, when we got to bless the people in that town in Zimbabwe. And so 
if you take anything away from this conversation, it's the fact that in less than 30 minutes, 30 people changed numerous lives with $5. And it's not about the money. It's about what the money can do. And as I started this podcast episode with you talking about what would you rather have, the things or the experiences, it's okay if you like things. I, I'm, I'm with you. I like things too. And yet I also really am very intentional about making sure that the things don't overshadow the experiences I can have. So in other words, I'm going to make sure that whatever dollars I have will not just only go to things, will always go to creating experiences for myself and for others. Because that experience that we had on the trip, I pray blesses you too, because I'm talking about it and sharing that with you. And so we all have this power to change lives and we all have this power to impact each other. And I believe experiences do that for us. And so what will be your next great experience? It could be a trip, something that you do for a day. It could be a dinner party that you want to plan. It, it's really up to you, but it's about what you will feel and how you will connect with the experience and how it will leave you after. That's the thing about experiences because they're, they're transformational. They will change you. So thank you for letting me share a little bit about that experience in South Africa it truly was amazing. I hope that this was a great way for you to get a shift in mindset. And that's what Mojo is all about. It's helping you to take a look at things maybe a little differently so that you can use it as inspiration to live your version of a great life. So thanks so much for being with me every week. I love that you're here. And if you really loved what we talked about today, share it with someone else. I'm sure you can be a blessing by doing that. And I appreciate the shares and the feedback. Please definitely uh, rate the show, share it with your friends. That's a way that we can continue to bring amazing content to you week after week. So thanks again, and I'll see you next week.